What's going on? Today we're going to create a trendy streetwear graphic. Here's a couple examples of the look we're going for. I'll link these brands up below because they are pretty dang cool. Step one is to find some imagery. I love using this crap hound book. Basically, it's just a black and white clip art book. As you can see as I'm flipping through these pages, it has some really wild stuff in it. When I found this rotary phone dial, and this car insurance jingle popped into my head. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time! Snap a picture and I'll meet you in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. Click the lock icon to unlock your layer. Come up here to get a lasso. And then drag this lasso around everything that you want to keep. So in my case, I dragged around the rotary dial and this little skull here. Next, we want to select everything that is not that. So hit Command Shift I on your keyboard, and that's if you're using a Mac. Hit Delete. Next, I don't really want this exchange type here, so I'm just going to make a little lasso around this. And I'll also make a lasso around this. I just held down Shift so I can add to this selection. Next, I'll hold down Shift F5 on my keyboard. My keycaster is not going to recognize it, but that is Shift F5 for Content Aware Fill. I'll hit OK. And what that's going to do is just fill it with this kind of grainy stuff here. Next, I want to get the skull in the center here. So take another lasso and drag it around the skull. Make sure this layer is selected, and then you're going to hit Command J on the keyboard. That basically just brings that onto a new layer. I'll go back to my selection tool and drag this right about into the middle where I want it. From there, you're going to set it to multiply. And then as you can see, you can see where you cut out, which we do not want. So I'll drag a levels layer on top of that. Hold down option till you get this little arrow guy here. Um, then click, and that's going to only select the layer directly below it. So from there, we'll just drag this white slider over till that box disappears. Next, we need to drag a levels layer on top of everything just to make our blacks nice and black and our whites nice and white. There we go. And then the next thing I can see, this skull is probably going to look a little weird because it doesn't have the same level of texture. So I'll take my skull. Let me name that layer. And then I'll hit this button here to create a mask on that skull. Next, I'll hit B to bring up my brushes. I found this little splatter brush. You can buy brushes, but for now, we'll just use the ones that come default. Make your brush nice and small, and just go ahead and paint some texture into this skull. Just a tip, so you need to make sure that this is actually selected. So if we look over here, now you can see this is selected, and here that is selected. So make sure that's selected, and then over here, you need to have black as your fill color and that will leave you with this textured item. Go to Image, Mode, make sure you're in grayscale first, and then you'll be able to hit Bitmap. We'll use Diffusion Dither, because that's kind of already what they've got going on. Hit OK, and boom, here's our bitmapped image. Next, we'll want to go ahead and save this as a TIFF. I'll do File, Save As, select TIFF, hit Save. These options are good. Launch Illustrator and bring the TIFF that we just created in here. And the best thing about using a TIFF in Illustrator is that you can recolor it, but I think black's going to look pretty good for this. Of course, since this is cooking show style, I'll just scroll over and we have the graphic all created, but why don't I just go ahead and show you how to do that. So anyways, in my symbols palette, I have this little type on a path thing here. Come up here, hit break link, and I'll just hit command shift G a few times to ungroup this stuff. Go ahead and delete everything we don't need, and then I'm going to scale this up. I don't know why it's been going crazy like that, but we'll just fix it. Hiding this thing in your symbols palette can be super useful, but if you don't have that, come up here, drag out an ellipse type tool. You just hold it down, get to type on a path tool, and just go ahead and click it right onto this shape here. Next, just double click the type on a path tool for these options. As you can see here, basically I just wanna choose center for this. Leave everything else alone and hit okay. Next, I'm gonna come here, select everything, and I want the text to be centered. So I'll go ahead and do that. We can do Helvetica bold and just make the type size bigger. Go ahead and hit this to turn it all caps and you can see we'll pretty much be ready to go. 
Here's what I went with as far as the layout of the text. I also added this 1-800 general, but you'll notice that the type is way too crisp compared to our image. So to fix that, make a transparent box. So that's just a box with, as you can see here, no fill and no stroke. So go ahead and make that transparent box around it and then just select everything. And then I want to deselect, so I'll hold shift and just hit these two smaller types because we don't want those selected. Hit command C. Let's jump back over to Photoshop here, and I'm going to hit Command N to create a new document. As you can see, it actually takes that size that we copied, and it gives that as an option. So that is awesome. I'll just hit 300 pixels per inch and hit Create. Command V to go ahead and paste this in, and we'll paste it as a smart object. So we have our smart object here. Make sure it's selected. Go up to Filter blur and choose Gaussian blur. I like to choose something right around two or three pixels for this. I think two is looking pretty good, so I'll hit OK. Go back up to filter, go to sharpen, unsharp mask, and then this is just going to smooth out those edges and make them not so crisp. So these settings look good here. I'll hit OK. Next, we need to add texture using the same process as before. I'll speed this up a little bit. The last thing we need to do is just go back to Illustrator, select our two pieces of small type, select our transparent box, hit Command C, come back over here, bring this in, and we just need to do that same process to the smaller type, which I will speed up. So there we go, we've got all our type. The last step is just to bitmap this. Again, image, mode. This time we'll turn it to grayscale. I'll say don't flatten, don't rasterize. Discard the color, image, mode, and bitmap it. Go ahead and do our diffusion dither, hit OK, and here we are with our bitmapped file. Go ahead and hit Command Shift S to save as, save it right into our TIFF folder. Next, hop back into Illustrator, bring the type in, and pair it together with the image just like this. And boom, that is our final artwork. The only thing left to do is put it on a t-shirt mock-up. Let's just make sure this is on an artboard. As you can see, I do have it on an artboard here, and it's artboard 2. So just go ahead and save this file. You can close it, and then we'll jump into Photoshop. Here's our mock-up in Photoshop. I'll do an entire tutorial on mock-ups, but for now, leave a comment below if you need help with it. Double click this layer here, Art, and in here we'll go to File, Place Linked, and then just navigate to our Illustrator file, which is here, Place, and then we can select the artboard. I'll do artboard number two and hit OK. Boom, our artwork is in here, but of course this is cooking show style, so I already have it in here and sized correctly. I'll hit Command Save, and boom, here is our t-shirt graphic. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure to do all the things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.